So what we will do today is you know, we will discuss Thakadi Shivashankara Pillai's short story in the flood. It was originally written in Malayalam with the title uh, Vella Pokathil. I will give you a brief introduction to the writer as Kerlites, as Malayalis. No, uh, we don't need an introduction to Thakadi. He is that familiar to us. But still, uh, for the sake of sharing a certain, a few details, which are a must or which must be remembered regarding Thagari. Now, I'll share a few details with you. Now, I really suggest you keep a book and a pen with you uh, so that you can jot down some of the important points. Thagari Shivashankara Pillai was born on April 17, 1912 in Thagari and he died on April 10, 1999 at Kuttanad in Alapura. He is popularly known as Thagari after his place of birth. His contributions to literature include some 40 novels and more than 600 short stories written in the Malayalam language. Through his works, he portrayed the impact of events on society in his home state of Kerala and also reflected his concern for its poor, lower caste members and for the downtrodden society at large. He was also known as the Kerala Maupassant. Maupassant was actually a 19th century French writer. So his uh, Thagari was also known as the Kerala's Maupassant. He had his early education in the local schools and later trained at the law college Trivandrum, which earned him the job as the pleader in the judicial court at Ambalapura for several years. His most famous works are Dandi Dangari, which came out in 1948, Ause Pinde Makkal, which was published in 1959, Anju Pendangal, which came out in 1961. Kair, one of his most uh, popular works, which came out in 1978, and Chemin, the novel that we are all familiar with, uh, which was adapted into a film in 1965. This novel came out in 1956. Several of these works have been translated into Indian and European languages and also adapted as films by reputed filmmakers like Ramu Karyat, who is the director of the film Chemin, and Adur Gobalakrishnan. Chemin fetched him the Sahitya Academy Award in 1958. For his novel Kair, he was awarded India's highest literary award, the Jnanapid Award in 1984. He was also honored with the third highest civilian award, the Patma Bhushan by the government of India. Now a few words about the story that we are about to learn. The story in the flood, which has the Malayalam title Vella Pukatil, was one of Thagari's early short stories published in his first short story collection titled Pudumalar that came out in 1935. So this was part of this collection titled Pudumalar which came out in 1935. It narrates the story of a dog in times of a flood. The fiction depicts how Thagari paid a lot of attention to the finer details of experienced reality. So these are some of the details that I have uh, to share with respect to this writer, uh, Thagari Shivashankara Pillai. Now let's move into the short story. I will read the short story and at the same time I will give you explanations. Now if you have the textbook it would be very nice if you if you can take it and read along with me. I will give explanations to the you know the difficult words that you you confront in between. Now also I would you know go on interpreting 
the theme um, as well as the internal connections that it has. The temple was the highest point in the village. Here stood the god, neck deep in water. So at the very outset we understand details or we get details regarding the setting of the story and also what is the complication that is going to happen. What is the problem that is going to be narrated throughout the story. The temple was the highest point in the village. So a village is a setting and the temple was the highest point, the highest you know, point that anyone could reach in that particular temple. And what is the complication that we find in the story? It's a flood. As it is you know, indicated through the title, we have a flood situation in that particular village. And there in the temple, which was the highest point in the village, stood the god neck deep in water. So you can imagine you know, the severe situation, the intense serious situation that they are confronting. Water, water everywhere. The villagers had all left for the mainland. Only those who owned boats had left a few behind to guard the houses. There were 67 children huddled in the three rooms in the attic of the temple. So the villagers are experiencing a flood. Now all the villagers had left for the mainland. Mainland means dry land. You can interpret it as dry land. Or the upper regions where they will, will not be affected by the flood. Now only those who owned boats had left a few behind to guard the houses. So only who owned you know boats country boats you know they uh, stayed behind in their houses all the others had left there were 67 children huddled in the three rooms huddle means in a crowded manner in the three rooms in the attic of the temple uh, attic is a space you know just below the roof it's often used as a storage space but as of now you have you know people huddle in there you have 67 children uh, in around three rooms. There were also 356 men as well as dogs, cats, goats and fowls. All living together in great amity. So you have 67 children as well as 356 men who are living there in great amity. Amity means in a, kind, in a state of friendship or cordiality. So you have these many number of people who are living in that small space which is the attic of the temple and there were no corals. For two nights and a day, Chenna Parayan braved the flood alone. He had no boat. It was now three days since his landlord deserted him to save himself. So for two nights and a day, Chenna Parayan, he is the first character that we meet in the story. Chenna Parayan braved the flood alone. So he fought the flood alone because his landlord, the one who had given him the land, you know, had deserted him. And he and he did that he did that to save himself. It was now three days since his landlord deserted him to save himself. Chenna had made a raised platform in the hut with coconut husks and poles at the first sight of the surging waters. So Chenna Presume that a flood is go is imminent. It might come soon. So he raised, he built a raised platform in the hut with coconut husk. Husk is what you call as chagri in Malayalam. And poles at the first sight of surging waters. He stayed indoors for two days, hoping that the waters would recede. How could he leave the place so soon? In the plot were a few bunches of banana and some hay and leaving the place would certainly mean leaving these at the mercy of pilferers. Pilferers means you know, thieves. 
Now the water had risen above the platform and sunk a portion of the thatched roof too. So the water level was on the rise. Chenna called out from inside, but who was there to answer? His woman who was pregnant, four children, a cat and a dog, his dependents. So these uh, were the members of his family. He had a pregnant wife, four children, a cat and a dog. And these were the members who depended on, depended on him. And he knew that his end and theirs was near as it would not take longer than a few hours for the whole hut to be submerged. So they were like, you know, ready to face death. Janna knew that the water was, you know, on the rise and they might face their death anytime soon. It had been raining heavily and incessantly for three days now. Chenna somehow got out of the hut by making a crack in the thatch and looked around. At some distance in the north was a catamaran. Chenna cried out aloud to the boatman. A catamaran is a boat with parallel hulls, something which you call as Changadam in Malayalam. So he found a catamaran and Chenna he cried out loud to the boatmen to attract their attention. Luckily, they heard him and started in his direction. He quickly pulled out his woman and children as well as the cat and the dog through the crack in the roof. By then, the catamaran had drawn up. So, they would have, you know, faced death if it wasn't for this boatman who uh, came to rescue Channa and his family. It's because Channa cried out aloud that they could, you know, uh, listen to his voice and right now they are with Channa to save his family. The children were clambering onto the catamaran. Clambering means, you know, to climb in an awkward manner. You know, they are in the midst of a flood. They are trying to escape and these children were somehow you know, struggling to get onto the catamaran. Channa cha, pui! Channa heard someone shouting to him from the west. He turned around. Come on here. It was Mariatra Kunyapen calling from his rooftop. Channa hastily drew his wife onto the catamaran. The cat also leaped on board in an instant. No one took notice of the dog who was still sniffing around in the western end of the hut. So this is the point from where things are going to get a bit more complicated because you know they you know leave the place without the dog. Nobody noticed the dog who was still sniffing around in the western end of the hut. The catamaran started moving. Remember that they haven't taken their dog. He is in the hut. And it was soon in midwater again. So they left the hut in the catamaran without the dog. The dog came back to the rooftop. Channa's vessel was now at some distance away from the house. He could see it flying away. He started mourning in great pain, making sounds like the cries of a hapless human being. But who was there to hear him? He ran around the house from end to end, sniffing and whimpering. So the dog, the dog was, you know, crying for help. It looked very hapless. Uh, it deserved our pity because, you know, there was no other way to ex escape other than the catamaran that took Channa and his family. But right now the dog is stranded uh, in the midst of the flood in a hut. And that might any, to, any soon be engulfed by the surging waters. He started mourning in great pain, making sounds like the cries of a hapless human being. So the dog knew that the catamaran was moving away and, you know, anytime soon he would submerge himself in the water. He would be engulfed by the surging water. So he makes all these hapless sounds. But who was there to hear him? He runs around the house from end to end, sniffing and whimpering. A frog who was sitting quietly on the rooftop was alarmed by all this unexpected noise. 
It dived into the water in front of the dog. Splosh! The dog started. A shiver ran down his spine. He stood there for a long time staring at the ripples the frog had created. So the dog was already worried. It was in a tense kind of situation and he did not know what actually happened. What happened is as readers we know that a dog just uh, a frog just you know dived into the water but he did not know what happened. He kept on staring at the ripples the frog had created. Then again, he started sniffing around here and there. Maybe he was searching for food. Another frog leaped into the water after urinating into his nostrils. Look at what the, fro the second frog did to the dog. It urinated into his nostrils. This made him very restive. Restive means tense or impatient. And he started sneezing violently. Then he wiped his face clean with one of his forelimbs. The torrential rain started again. So it was already raining for three days incessantly without any stop. And it was already, the village was already confronting a flooded, flooding situation. Now already, you know, the, the temple which was the highest point in the village was almost half submerged in the water. And, you know, the rain started again, the torrential rain, the rain that pours in abundance. It started again. The dog huddled up and suffered it through. Huddled means, you know, to crouch or to curl up. The dog huddled up and suffered it through. His master had by then reached Ambalapura. So his master, whom he had been serving for a long period of time, he escaped and he reached Ambalapura. Night. A huge crocodile floated past that house, gently brushing its half-submerged roof as it did so. So we have yet another animal character appearing in the story. It's a crocodile. The dog lowered its tail in fear and started barking. So the dog became afraid as he saw the crocodile and he lowered his tail. Uh, you know when the dog lowers its tail, it's when it becomes uh, terrified or afraid and it starts barking. But the crocodile just moved off as though it hadn't noticed anything. That hunger tormented animal wailed from the rooftop, rooftop peering out into the dark and cloudy sky. So the hunger tormented, it's tensed. It's lonely. It has been, you know, abandoned in a particular place, especially in the midst of a flood. And it's being hunger tormented. It's hungry. It's feeling hungry. The hunger tormented animal wailed from the rooftop. Wail means to cry. Peering out into the dark and cloud sky. So he was looking for someone out there. Someone who would come and save him. He might be expecting his master, Chenna, but uh, as readers, we know that he has already, you know, uh, sailed back to safety. He has reached Ambalapura. His plaintive cry reached places far off. The sympathetic wind god took it to distant lands. And those few on guard of the houses, the soft-hearted among them, must have said, listen to that dog mourning from the roof. So we see, you know, or we understand that there are other people who take pity on this dog but no, do nothing uh, so as to save it. His master must now be eating his supper from the sea coast. At the end of the supper, as is his wont, he might still keep a share for the dog. So the people who are taking pity on uh, the dog also thinks about what the master might be doing now. The master might be missing this particular dog and he might also keep a share from his dinner for the dog. The dog cried aloud continually for a long time. Now that is all the dog could do. 
it could not actually you know swim through this you know surging waters and you know find a uh, dry land that was you now that would have you know put the dog into more trouble what it what all what the dog could do was you know to cry to cry on top of his voice then the cry became softer and softer before it stopped from some house in the north the man on guard was chanting the ramayana for some time the dog turned westward as though listening to the chant and then after a while he started groaning again and making loud throat rending noises the silence of the night was rent again by the sweet chant of the ramayana so there was somebody who was chanting this ramayana but and the dog could hear that and he looked in that particular direction we understand that he is you know uh, looking for some sort of hope he wants somebody to come and rescue him from that you know flooding situation so when he listens to the sound of a human being you know hope grows in him and he looks in that particular direction but unfortunately it's the same chant that he heard earlier now once again the dog remained silent a little longer this time to listen to the mellifluous chant of the Rama, ramayana mellifluous means you know something which is very pleasing to the ear so the dog started listening to the chant of the ramayana the gentle music seemed to dissolve into the whiff of a cold breeze whiff is a short light gust of air now nothing was to be heard except the sound of the wind and the gentle breeze on the roof chenna's dog was lying down its breath its breath heavy on itself occasionally muttering something to itself in despair a fish popped up here and a frog leaped out there at which the dog got up to bark and growl by turns so the frog the fish everything seemed to be disturbing this dog now it's in a tense to situation and that is why it is responding to you know, every single movement and every single sound that it hears and sees around it A fish popped up here and a frog leaped out there at which the dog got up to bark and growl by turns Early morning the dog started groaning in low tones he was elaborating the notes of a raga fit to melt the hearts of the listeners so he was trying to attract some listeners and he started groaning for that Frogs stared at him in amazement He in turn watched them swishing past him and singing underwater after swimming across in an ankle. He surveyed the thatched roofs remaining above the water level. There were his hopes, though all were desolate. No fire burned anywhere. He mowed the fleas biting his body and occasionally scratched at his chin with his hind legs in order to drive them away. so you uh, you see that the writer focuses even on the minute details he even narrates to us you know what the dog does at a particular moment how he responds to whatever that happens around him what is going through his minds so you find every single or every minute details with respect the, to the you know the events that happen as part of this uh, story in a in a detailed manner the sun shone for a while he dozed off in the sunlight he jumped up and barked when the shadow of the banana leaf swaying in the breeze fell on the rooftop so even when a banana leaf fell on the rooftop he started barking at it so that is how tensed how that is how much you know uh, f- you know frightful the situation is for him that is how much afraid he is then the clouds swallowed the sun it was dark once again 
the wind created ripples in the water carcasses of dead animals carcass means you know decaying rotten body of dead animals carcasses of dead animals were seen floating around in the waves they were moving in all directions they seemed afraid of nothing the dog looked at all that in great desire he growled now we understood that the dog is hungry and that is why perhaps it looks at this carcass that is floating all around him and with great desire and all he could do was to growl a small boat was moving swiftly at some distance away from the house the dog saw it and got up wagging his tail he watched it move till it disappeared into the grove of palms so for a moment there was a sign of hope there was a small boat which was moving at a quick pace at some distance and he wagged his ta- tail and that shows that you know uh, and a hope filled in his heart he was expecting them to come and retrieve him that retrieve him from that particular place but all he could see was the boat moving to a distance and disappearing into the grove of palms the group of palm trees it started drizzling so it started raining once again the dog sat down on his hind limbs pinning himself on his four limbs and gazed around helplessness writ large in his eyes so if you could you know, see the eyes of the dog you could have you know excavated the you know the sense of helplessness that it was actually experiencing the drizzle stopped a small boat came from the house in the north and stopped near the palm tree on seeing it the dog wagged his tail and sighed and growled growled the boatman picked a tender coconut from the palm and broke it and drank up the juice he then rowed off so from time to time he gets certain or he sees certain sights that actually fills him with hope but unfortunately he finds himself abandoned again in that particular hut and nobody comes to rescue him the man who just came you know he picks up a tender coconut from the palm tree he breaks it and he drinks up the juice and then he rows away so you know we understand that the dog is still in his hut he hasn't been rescued A crow perching on a tree at a distance swooped down on the rotting carcass of a huge bull. Even as the dog was barking at it lustily, the crow put its beak deep into the rotting flesh and started eating at it with an air of unconcern. After some time having had its fill, the crow flew off. The, do- do- the dog is hungry. he can see carcasses floating around him but he can do anything he cannot just you know uh, go into the water and you know uh, bite or take a chew from it so all it can do is watch the other animals other birds feeding on it a green bird twittered from the leaf of the banana tree near the house the dog became restless and barked the bird too flew away A colony of ants afloat on water was washed on the rooftop the ants were saved the dog kissed them thinking perhaps that they were eatable at this he sneezed again and again his face turning red and puffed up so finally you see that you know a ants which a group of ants which were afloat on a particular leaf you now it gets washed on the rooftop the dog you know seeing them take so takes them for something which could be you know uh, took them for something which can be eaten but uh, when he tries to do that he starts to sneeze again and his face becomes red and puffed up in the afternoon two men came that way in a small boat the dog was grateful and barked and wagged his tail he spoke to them in a language close to human speech he stepped into the water all set to jump into the boat see here is a dog said one of the men the dog moaned in gratitude as though he could see the man's sympathy let it be there said the other the dog opened his mouth as if he was chewing something and made some inarticulate sounds 
he prayed hard and tried to jump into the boat so it's as if somebody has come to rescue him we have two men who you know uh, in the afternoon have come near the hut in a small boat the dog felt so grateful it started you know wagging his tail seeing the uh, two men who came uh, to the hut uh the it was like the dog was talking to the two you know men who actually came to the hut the boat moved off the dog groaned once again one of the boatmen turned back god that cry came not from the boatman so in spite of the boatman having come to the hut they leave the place without fetching this dog and you now one of the boatman he turned back and it was as if he could hear the sound of somebody saying god but that cry did not come from the boatman it was from the god it was as if the dog was speaking it was as if the dog was speaking the language of the humans and the word that he was trying to say is god that weak and anguished cry dissolved into the wind there was nothing to be heard after that except the interminable sound of waves no one turned back there after only the dog stayed peering at the boat till it disappeared from sight so it is the third time that he sees a boat that was very close to the hut but none of the men who came by the boats rescued the dog the dog is still in the hut he climbed on the rooftop once again growling as if bidding farewell to the world outside perhaps he was trying to say that never again would he love the human kind so we understand this animal as a this dog as an animal that is very loyal to the human beings but right now it has taken a decision that he would never again he would love the human kind he would never be loyal to the human kind again he lapped up the flood water and then he looked at the birds flying above he saw a water snake frolicking in the waves move towards him the dog swiftly jumped onto the rooftop the snake sneaked in through the crack in the roof left open by channa and family the dog peeped inside through the crack and started barking barking gravely then he growled a growl filled with fright for life and hunger it communicated itself to the speaker of any language even maybe to a resident of mars a universal language so we understand that the dog is in a pathetic situation it has already seen some boats come and go it has taken the decision that it will not be loyal to the human kind or it would not love the human kind anymore it's hungry it's desolate it's in a despair a kind of situation he has no hope as of now and he sees you know a snake sneak in through the crack in the roof you now which was left open by chenna and family and you know it was afraid and it was feeling hungry at the same time so perhaps the dog wanted to consume this snake but it was afraid so it gave out a growl which was you know so much full of fright for life and hunger that night was terrible with heavy rain and storm the roof started tottering in the waves the dog almost fell off from the rooftop twice then there emerged a long head from under the water now i believe you could presume whose head this would be it was that of a crocodile so as night falls now you find that this crocodile this this crocodile come Uh, comes near the hut now for the crocodile the dog you know might be a food a possible you know dinner so that might be the reason why it is lurking around the hut on seeing it the dog started barking in great fear there was also the sound of fowls wailing together from somewhere nearby so the or the narrates to us every single sight that the dog sees every single thing that is happening around the hut 
and also narrates to us the sounds that you know one could actually hear if that person was in the sport. Where is the dog barking from? Haven't the people here moved out? It was from a boat carrying loads of hay, coconuts and bananas that stopped near the banana tree. So again a boat passed by. The boat was carrying loads of hay, coconuts and bananas and it stopped near the banana tree. And the people, you know, it might be the people in the boat that is guessing, thinking, where is the dog barking from? Haven't the people here moved out? So they could not actually support this dog that was in the hut. So they were, you know, thinking, they were guessing from where this sound or where, from where this dog was barking. Boy, the dog is likely to leap down. And then the dog leapt down from the rooftop and the man who had scrambled up went straight down into the water. The other guy helped him into the boat. By then the dog had swum back to the roof. He shook himself dry and continued barking with renewed fury. As of now we don't understand who these men are. No, we just know that there are a few people near the hut and they have come there with their purpose. Now let's try to understand that particular purpose. The thieves took away all the bananas in the plot. So the people, the persons who had come there were actually thieves. They took away all the bananas which were there in the plot. So in spite of all the danger which was there in the situation, in spite of all the sufferings that people were facing, facing, you know, there were thieves trying to you know, steal things from the uh, left away plot that were there. The thieves, thieves took away all the bananas in the plot. You will get it, they said to the dog who was barking his head off. Then they loaded the boat with more of hay. At the end, one of them climbed on to the rooftop. The dog, not to miss his chance, bit him hard on the leg. He got a mouthful of flesh. So even in the midst of this particular, you know, confusion and chaos and disorder, you know, he, the dog, it is trying to protect the land of its master, the hut of its master, probably the produce of its master, which is Chennaparen. So even though the master wasn't loyal to this dog, even though the master, you know, gets back to safety without taking the dog along with him, you know, the dog tries to be loyal to its master. It attacks the thieves who were, you know, trying to uh, thieve all the, you know, properties that were there in that particular stretch of land or in that hut probably. The man shrieked in pain and threw himself back into the boat, even as his friend gave the dog a blow on his belly with a wooden pole. The dog gets attacked as a result of his you know, actions. You know, it bites the man hard on the leg and he gets a mouthful of flesh. And for that, the man hits him with a wooden pole. The dog's wail tapered off into a faint whimper. The man, bitten by the dog, was crying in the boat even as his friend was seen rebuking and consoling him before the two left the place. So the thieves come, they take whatever that was there and they go. The dog, it tries to protect the hut, the properties, whatever was there, whatever that remained in the hut and it you know, showed that it was once again loyal to its master. It was quite some time before the dog barked again. You must also remember that if he hadn't done that, perhaps, you know, the men, the thieves would have rescued him. But he chose to be loyal to his master, the master who wasn't loyal to him, who actually deserted him in that hut. It was quite some time. It was close on midnight. The dead body of a huge cow was washed atop the house. The dog was watching it from the roof. 
He didn't go down immediately. The cow was being moved gently by the flood water. So there was a possible, you know, uh, something which could, he could have, you know, devoured as food. And he slowly waits for it to come near the hut. The dead body of a huge cow was washed atop the house. The dog was watching it from the roof. He didn't go down immediately. The cow was being moved gently by the flood water. The dog growled. He tore open the roof thatch and slowly went down. He bit at the moving body to bring it closer to himself. Yes, here is God's splendid. He started eating at it with great relish. So finally, the dog got some food and it was eating it with great relish. Shum! It was an unexpected blow. Just now, we don't know what happened. You know, all we know that, you know, a hard blow came in the direction of the dog. And no sight of the dog. And the cow floated off after a leap and a dive. So there was a huge blow that came in the direction of the dog. And at the next moment, you know, you couldn't see the dog. You could see the carcass, the dead body of the cow, but you couldn't see the dog who was actually chewing bits from the cow's dead body. There was no sound after that. There was no sound after that, except that of the storm that was howling away and the croaking of the frogs and the clamor of the waves. So earlier we used to continuously listen to the wailing of the dog, the whining of the, the, you know, the crying of the dog. But now you couldn't listen to the sound of the dog. There was no sound after that except that of the storm that was howling away and the croaking of the frogs and the clamor of the waves. Clamor means, clamor means a loud, harsh sound. Otherwise, it was quite silent. The soft-hearted guard did not hear the groan of the dog after that. Rotten corpses floated across the water here and there. Some were being eaten quietly by the crows. There was no sound to breach the quiet. No let up in the work of the thieves either, all bare and empty. So, what was there before was still there except the dog. That is what the author is trying to convey. After some time, the hut went tumbled and plunged beneath the waters. Nothing could now be seen above the vast stretch of water. The loyal dog had guarded his master's house till the very end. So we understand that the dog has met with his hand. And what has, his, what has the dog done? No, he guarded his master's house till the very end. And the, the thieves, they tried to loot the house, but the dog prevented them from doing so. He bit them. As I said earlier, if he, if he hadn't done that, no, he could have actually escaped from that place. But he chose to defend his master's property, to save his master's pro property. And therefore, he meets with his end. Now he too was gone. The house stayed above the water until the dog's capture by a crocodile. So this is where the narrator reveals what actually happened to the dog. He was eaten up by a crocodile. He was captured by a crocodile. The crocodile you know, that kept an eye for the last two nights. Kept an eye on the dog. It was as if the house didn't go down before because of him. Now that he too had gone, the house sank under the water. So it was as if the house stayed so that it could protect the dog. Now once the dog died, once it perished, now the, the, the house too, the hut too came crumbling down. Now the flood water started receding. Channa came back swimming to his hut in search of his dog. There under a coconut tree, he found a dead boat dead dog's body gently moved by the ripples so once the flood water receded channa the master the owner of this particular dog he comes back swimming to his hut and he searches for his dog and he finds the dead body of the dog under a coconut tree channa examined it turning it from side to side with his toe was it his dog so it was so mauled, it was so eaten up, it was so disfigured that Channa couldn't even understand if it was his dog. One of its ears was missing and the body was all rotten and discolored. So the body was too disfigured that even the master could not identify it. 
so the dog who was so loyal to his master the dog who protected his master's property you know that particular dog or the master couldn't even identify that particular dog that is where you know uh, you have to analyze the relationship between the dog and its master the master saves his family but unfortunately he abandons this dog in his hut and the dog tries everything from its side to protect this property this hut and all the belongings of its master but finally it meets with its end it's devoured by the crocodile so that is where the story ends so i hope the explanations were satisfactory i hope you have you know understood the story as such um, if you ask me what the theme of this particular story is you know i would say that uh, it's about a dog which you know it uh, keeps its loyalty uh, even at the face of danger how he protects his masters you know property whatever that was left in that particular hut how he proclaims his loyalty to his master uh, through his death and you know uh, in the background you can also read how the master channa paren how you know uh, unfortunately uh, becomes very disloyal uh, to the dog how he you know he could have you know waited perhaps for a second or two to you know take uh, rescue the dog or to take the dog along with him but unfortunately he doesn't it's only after the flood that he comes back to the place and he couldn't even identify you know his dog it was so disfigured uh, that even his master couldn't identify him so that is all about in the flood by uh, tagari shiva shankara pillai let me thank all those who joined uh, with me uh, for this particular session if you have any comments to raise or any doubts to clarify you can post it as a comment underneath this uh, video which you can uh, find on youtube thank you so much for joining me Thank <laughs> you.